PR interval is going to be three to five boxes. Each small box is 40 milliseconds. And that was 40 milliseconds. So this CKG looks to be about three to four boxes, which is within normal limits. A first degree AV block is greater than five boxes. So here's an example where the PR interval is the same, but it is prolonged, giving us first degree AV block. And in a first degree AV block, all the QRS complexes are able to walk out. Next we have Mobitz type 1 or Winky block where the PR interval keeps prolonging. So here's the first PR interval, the second PR interval a little bit longer, and then the third PR interval, which is even a little bit longer, and then eventually you get a dropped beat. So in Winkybuck, the QRS complexes don't walk out because the PR interval keeps prolonging. So in Mobitz type 2, you're going to have a normal sinus rhythm, the PR interval is going to be constant, everything's going to march out, but then there's going to be a drop B. So here all the QRS complexes march out, march out, and then there's a drop B. And this rate looks like it's about 300, 150, 100, about 120. And it looks like all the atrial P waves are walking out as well. And then all of a sudden you get a dropped beat. Sometimes when there's dropped beats, it gets a little tricky to figure out what's a P wave and what's a T wave. So just uh, learn your ABCs and then uh, sing them. P Q R S T P Q R S T P Q R S T P Q R S T P Q R S T P drop. And this is an actual emergency that requires CCU or transcutaneous pacing. In complete heart block, the P waves and QRS complexes are completely independent of each other. The P to P intervals are all going to be equal, and the QRS complexes are also going to walk. Here the P waves are all walking out appropriately, and here the QRS complexes are all walking out as well. So our atrial rate is about 140 beats a minute. So our ventricular rate 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, 40 is under 50 beats a minute. And there's nothing cute about a 140, 40 second ratio. The normal QRS complex should be under 120 milliseconds or three boxes. For the QRS duration, I like to look in leads V1, V2, V5, V6. See if I can see something like bunny ears, the R, S, R prime or something like that. So we look at the QRS complex and it looks to be about two boxes, 80 milliseconds, normal. So a right bundle branch block has a QRS complex that's greater than 120 milliseconds, and you might see an RSR prime in V1 or V2. So here we're measuring the QRS complex in V1, and it looks like there's an RSR prime pattern. And when measured, it looks like it's greater than 120 milliseconds. So here we have the RB standing for right bundle and the LB standing for left bundle. So here the caliber represents lead V1. Depolarization is blocked on the right bundle, and the septum gets depolarized moving towards V1, giving a positive R wave in V1. Next, the depolarization moves down the left bundle, away from V1, giving a negative S wave in V1. Then we have depolarization moving towards the right ventricle, towards lead V1. And this gives us our R prime. And this gives the appearance of bunny ears in V1 or V2 in a right bundle branch block. Sometimes I don't get that classic R, S, R prime pattern in V1 or V2. So another thing that helps me uh, determine a right bundle branch block is a deep or slurred S wave in lead 1, V5, or V6. You're going to see a deep S wave in lead 1, deep S wave in V5, and also a deep S wave in V6.
So if the right bundle is blocked, the depolarization goes down the left bundle first, and then it goes to the right ventricle. So towards the lead is positive, and away from the lead is negative, giving a positive QRS complex and a deep S wave. Same thing in V5, towards the lead is positive, away from the lead is negative. And a similar pattern in V6, towards it and away from it, giving that deep S wave. So when someone has a right bundle branch block, you're still able to assess for ischemia and hypertrophy. Someone who has a new right bundle branch block, you can maybe think of something like pulmonary embolus. So in the left bundle, you're going to see a QRS complex greater than 120 milliseconds, no normal Q wave in one, AVL, V5, or V6, and a T wave that is opposite of the depolarization of the QRS complex. So here the QRS complex looks greater than 120 milliseconds, no normal Q wave in lead one. No normal Q wave in AVL. No normal Q wave in V5. And no normal Q wave in V6. Also reviewing that EKG, the T wave was opposite of the QRS complex. So with left bundle branch blocks, you can't diagnose hypertrophy and it's very difficult to diagnose ischemia. So with a brand new left bundle branch block, you have to treat it as if it's an ST elevation MI. Um, I have to buy a Mercedes F55 AMG, then I have to buy a 911 Turbo, then I have to buy a Ferrari Enzo. So to calculate the QT interval, measure at the beginning of the QRS complex and the end of the T wave. In this example, that's about 10 boxes or 0.4 seconds. Then look at the previous R to R interval, which looks to be about 5, 10, 15, about 20. 20 boxes times 0.04 seconds equals about 0.8 seconds. Then we plug those numbers into our equation. 0.4 divided by the square root of 0.8 equals 0.449 seconds or 449 milliseconds. Quick tip. I like to do my math in seconds and then convert it back into milliseconds. But a quick way to do it is to measure the QT interval and then make sure that is half the R to R interval. 